Now it's recording. This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Kim. At this point, uh, it is 7.30 p.m. Uh, so I will uh, wish everyone a good evening and welcome you to the June 9, 2020 meeting of the Wethersfield Historic District Commission. For those who have not been here before, tonight's session is composed of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us the opportunity to clarify what you are proposing to do and for you to ask us any questions. Also, commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings at this time. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting, which follows the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, which follows the public hearing, but need not do so. The results of tonight's public meeting will be made available from the Wethersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that the Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other required permits, such as zoning in the wetlands or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before beginning construction. With this, I will ask our acting clerk, Commissioner Wolf, to read the legal notice. The Weathersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, June 9, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking certificates of appropriateness. Application 501520, Brendan Quinn seeking to construct an 8 by 10, 12 woodshed in the rear yard at 22 Harmon Court. Application 5016-20, Tyler Stetson seeking to install six foot wood fence around rear yard and install an 8 by 12 engineered woodshed in the rear yard at 123 State Street. Application 5017-20, Anthony Richardson seeking to construct a 10 by 10 woodshed in rear yard at 48 footpath lane. Application 5018-20, Heather Stone, seeking to construct 10 by 10 woodshed in rear yard at nine Main Street. Application 5019-20, Sandra Stavola, seeking to install five foot wood fence in rear yard, install exterior lighting on home at 157 Broad Street. If you wish to review the applications on file, you may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format. Any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, Wolf duly authorized, dated at Wethersfield, Connecticut, this 26th day of March, 2020. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wolf. And at this time, uh, we'll uh, note the role which uh, includes uh, Douglas Ovian and uh, Jennifer Wolf, regular members of the commission voting tonight. In addition, we have Vasek Miglas, an alternate member of the commission uh, who will be voting tonight as well. I think those are the only uh, three participating commissioners uh, in attendance this evening. And um, I'll ask uh, our coordinator, um, Ms. Kim Wolf, uh, do you have, uh, it looks like uh, 14 participants or 13 participants right now? I uh, do. Um, yeah, and 
um, and Weston's on, so he's your first one. That sounds great. Uh, without further ado, if there's no other uh, questions, I will uh, ask that we begin our public hearing with application number 5006. Uh, Weston is uh, returning for the project at 209 Middletown Avenue that was uh, tabled on the last date, 5006-20. Thank you for joining us again tonight, Weston. Thanks. Um, because it was tabled, um, I didn't uh, pick new doors. Um, well, in the first meeting, I mean, I'm not familiar with this. That was my first one. Uh, Originally, it was, um, it was, I just, I need some clarification because the first time, first it was like, oh, uh, somebody said, why well, have windows? It's a security. Some people don't like them, but um, then it changed to like the window shape. And then afterwards, in the second part, the, the town meeting, that was about the color, which was never mentioned in the first uh in in my part i mean maybe that was my fault i don't know but um i guess i'm just the way i see it the doors i've looked it's not like i just threw a dart and, and picked these i did a lot of research um i don't have like 10 grand to spend on like crazy doors these are like the best uh bang for the buck so to speak um and uh as far as design i don't see how they're breaking any code or rules or anything and color um i mean there's if you drive around weathersfield old weathersfield half the doors have windows half don't they're all kinds of different styles all kinds of different colors there's houses that are purple there's houses that are bright yellow somebody down the couple of houses down from me painted their foundation like orange so i don't think the color is necessarily um an aspect um well, wow, Weston, white. Yeah. Uh, Weston, I just wanted to say, we're certainly respectful of these doors if they are your first uh, and only choice. Um, and if that's the case, you know, we will certainly give them every due consideration we can and uh, consider the additional remarks you've made tonight as well. Um, we did table this to allow you to bring forward um, an um, additional uh, 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 door for our consideration. Uh, if you felt uh, that that was something that you felt comfortable doing, but if that's not where you are tonight, uh, you can stand on the uh, uh, position that you articulated to us on uh, the last hearing date. I guess at this point, the only thing that at this commissioner would be interested in knowing is if you did have an opportunity for there to be uh, a little bit more articulation on our part as to what we were looking for, either directly at this meeting tonight or through the uh, coordinator, if you would find it helpful to have some additional time to uh, consider something else, or if at the next meeting you would likely be in the same place where you are now. Yeah, well, I guess that's the thing because I just I just don't understand what the problem is with these. Like I said, is there? I mean, I kind of glanced. I I read through the the handbook and I don't see anything that would uh, disqualify them. And I just don't because like Middletown Ave is not the same as Main Street. Um, but I mean, even aside from that, I just don't see what these particular like why everyone had such a problem with these particular doors because they don't they go with the house and they don't detract from the neighborhood or the community i just don't know like what's wrong with them i guess okay i think mr miglis is willing to if i can um, help clarify provide this a some bit, of that uh, is that what you experienced last week and what many up other applicants will experience this time going around is you come in to us with a proposal and you defend that proposal. And what we come back with is a thought process. And that thought process is evolving as we are all sitting here. Uh, so that's why we come across as somebody says something about windows, somebody says something about color, somebody, all kinds of things. 
in the public meeting, we try to coalesce that into something a little bit more organized. And uh, what we were hoping from you is what exactly what we got tonight is that this is your first choice. You went back, you thought about it for uh, the two weeks and you're still sticking with it. And that's, you feel strongly about that. There are many people that come in here or often people come in here and something was proposed by the contractor. They go back and think about it and things change. And we wanted to make sure that you had that opportunity. Um, I don't know that it matters, but um, like I'm an electrician. So I, it's not that I do doors, but I've seen a lot. And, and uh, I also have a degree in design and art actually. Not that that matters either, but um, I don't know. I just, I've seen a lot of doors. I think I have rather poor mock-ups of like the black and white. If you wanted to see them, um, they're not really gonna, I mean, it's like not gonna justify one or the other, but um, I do have that available, I guess. No, I, from, my, from my perspective, you've made, you've made your case. Okay. Um, so then where do we go from here? I guess the final well, discussion. That's uh, right. We'll have a public meeting uh, following these hearings. And I think you'll get some more direction there uh, if there is not an approval this evening. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> All right. Yes, we would encourage you to uh, stay connected for the public meeting so we can talk a bit more about this. I have to say that to a certain extent, based on what you said last time, I'm kind of anticipated the position you might take this time. So I do have some thoughts about where we might go with this. And I'm interested in talking to our other commissioners about it and seeing uh, where we um, arrive. Um, while, we, while we have you though, um, did you look at any other products or you did not? Well, you like no, what you I, I totally did. I look, I mean, there are many brands of garage doors. They generally all have the same designs, more or less. Um, and I went, it's not like I, I went to multiple companies. I did this all beforehand. Um, and it's like I said, as far as I researched, I don't just buy things like, oh, like, let me buy this. Like I did a lot of research and uh, yes, there are, there, I mean, there's one or two doors that I like better, but like, I can't spend like 10, 12 grand on garage doors. Um, they do get very expensive. Um, and like I said, these are, I mean, what, regardless of what brand you pick, like I said, they're all various, have the same basic designs. Well, the only thing I would say for my sake is this, I would probably feel better about embracing what you would like if I had the feeling that you felt this was uh, the best choice regardless of the cost. Um, I think that you share with us to at least a certain extent the uh, fact that this does not resemble very closely what's, uh, uh, what might be there uh, and uh, going forward uh, what there is should be there but this is a different design that you seem to have embraced and it helps me if I know that the homeowner really wants the door that they have uh, presented to us because they think that it looks the best so I know that that you've qualified that a little bit uh, and I'm not saying that you have to go farther than that um, but I think that's part of the reason why we're all a little bit on the fence. And I think once we have our public meeting, the commissioners will be able to articulate a little bit better, you know, where we might be going jointly. Okay. I just want to say one last thing. Uh, sure. There is no door, like I would have to get like a custom made one. There is nothing. I mean, I've looked at 10 different companies, everything they have, there's nothing that will match that door exactly. It's impossible. 
Um, I think that what we're looking for is maybe something that evokes that door versus a match. Uh, what you've chosen is something different. And that's an argument that can be made for a change uh, based on personal taste and, and trends. Uh, so I would just say that uh, I don't think that we were trying to hold you to an exact match. Uh, but I think that the, this is uh, a relatively substantial change from the door that's there. Um, aside from being all black, I. I respectfully disagree. I think it's got the same elements. Um, it is different, but it's not like... Um, it actually is none of the same same elements at all, except that it is a garage door. Um, it, how do you, it, doesn't how like, you it doesn't look like a carriage door at all. And uh, the, obviously the window space is significantly smaller and a much more modern shape than the rectangles on the original doors. Um, it, that's ne not a critique, it's just a statement of fact that it, they, it has nothing in common with the original door except that it's a garage door. Um, but, you know, Julie noted that you, this is the one that you like best for your house at this point and we will vote on it. Thank you there very are, much. Sorry, uh, go ahead, sir. Thing, and the facade of the house up high, which there's a rather large black more ornate structure and it's actually a bit rounded in the same manner of the windows. Um, I don't know if I had that in the original presentation, but it's not like those doors or that garage was built the same time the house was. There's just no way. Um, so it's just, it is what it is. Um, well, we appreciate your time, Weston. And as I said earlier, uh, we appreciate your engaging with us on this uh, so that we can give what you're looking for its full due um, in the meeting that follows today. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. So at this point, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I'll uh, move to application number 5010, Dan Harrison, the project at 21 Wilcox Street. Dan, are you with us tonight? Hello, how are you? Oh, that's great. Uh, good to see you. Uh, so this uh, is a, uh, n another holdover application uh, that was tabled previously. Uh, there was an opportunity for commissioners to review um, and uh, a sample that uh, you left with us, and we appreciated having the chance uh, to see that uh, firsthand. Who got a chance to look at it? Yes. Thank you uh, for providing it. And uh, I would just say that for um, my purposes, uh, I did find that the finish uh, was a flat or matte finish. Uh, and uh, although it's construction, appears to resemble some of what we were talking about at the last meeting in terms of our concerns uh, where there are synthetics that are very shiny. Uh, this uh, format uh, was pretty forgiving. And I would also say that uh, it struck me as being very substantial, despite the fact that there are steel uh, insides uh, to both the rail and the spindles. Uh, the uh, white material, uh, the composite material, uh, is that's a, uh, it's a, on its that's own. a PVC material. Right, and that seemed um, substantial on its own, substantial enough uh, to replicate the weight and feel of, of wood. So, uh, I would just, I just thought I would uh, mention that in response to uh, what you brought us. There was a cross section available. And that's part of how it is that I'm commenting on both the outside and the inside. Mr. Harrison, I did look at the sample too and I liked it. Um, it's much more substantial, the composite part than other products that we've seen. Um, and as Doug said, the matte finish works very well. When you, when you use the word PVC that evokes, for me anyway, a thinner sort of shiny plastic product. And that's not what this is at all. 
Um, the only question I have for you is, I looked at the catalog, did you specify which style you wanted in the catalog of that in-tech product? I gave you guys the catalog before I could look through it, but I believe <laughs> it, it was the Dartmouth and it would be the flat top on the railing. Um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware of the name, but uh, I think there were two choices, either a maybe like an angled or a peaked top to the rail okay. yep. or a flat, and I would go with the flat. And the um, spindle is just a plain rectangle shape? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioner Wolf. Thank you. Mr. Miglis, do you have anything to I'm offer good. at this point? I'm good, Great. thank you. Dan, uh, thank you again uh, for providing the exhibit. Uh, we really appreciate uh, and are always on an ongoing effort uh, to look at products that replicate the look of existing products. Uh, thank you for helping to contribute to that and working with Kim, our coordinator on it. Okay. If there's anything, if there is anything more uh, at this point, I will ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against application number 5010, Dan Harrison, uh, the porch project at 21 Wilcox. Hearing none, uh, I will move on to application number 5015. Thank you. Quinn. Thank you very much, Dan. You're welcome to stay for the public meeting, but need not do so. Um, and just going back to application number 5015, Brendan Quinn, that's the uh, shed project at Harmon Court. That would be me. Uh, Mr. Quinn is unavailable. And um, I told him I would step in and do my best to uh, read through his application and uh, answer as many questions as I possibly can with the understanding that if I can't answer it, that um, it will be tabled. Thank you, Coordinator Wolf. We appreciate your standing in for the um, homeowner. So we did have documentation that was shared with us regarding this uh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, and uh, do either of the other commissioners with us this evening have anything that they want to say at this time? No, we do have a plot plan. And um, of course, I drove by the property. And it's going to be difficult to see Absolutely. behind the house where it's located. Um, you know, I think they've made, uh, it's wood, it's a good effort to match the house with the roof and the paint. Um, they've given us a couple different pictures. It looks like a very simple style shed. I don't really have any questions, I don't think. Thank you, Jennifer. Vasek? Uh, my only snarky comment was whether as the flowers are going to stay, flowers will stay yellow or not. <laughs> but uh, other than that, no. Thank you. All right. Uh, if, unless there's uh, uh, someone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application, that would be the shed planned for 20 or proposed for 22 Harmon Court. I will move on to application number 5016. That's 16. Taylor Stetson, the project. Um, a fencing project, I should say, at 123 State Street. And uh, who might be here for Taylor tonight? Taylor was here. No, hi. No. I'm, actually, I'm Dan DiCaccio. I'm actually the contractor. I'm here for Taylor. That's great. Um, Could you just identify your business address, sir, for the record? Uh, yes, uh, 188 Costello Road, Newington, Connecticut. And your Thank name, you. please? Dan DiCaccio. Thank you. And just for the record, is Taylor with you as well? He's not, but his okay. other okay. who uh, is the other Hi. homeowner, she's with me as well. Uh, Taylor had to, he, he's at work, he wasn't able to make That's it. fine. If the, homo if the other homeowner's there, if she could just identify herself for the record, we would appreciate it. Yep, Heather Avery, A-V-E-R-Y. And Heather, are, are you resident at 123 State Street also? Yes. Great. Thank you for joining us this evening. So at this point, uh, again, we have documentation that was provided to us. Is there anything that you'd like to let us know about the project in addition to what you submitted? 
Uh, no, pretty much what submitted was the gist of it. I mean, it's a basic um, standard six foot fence. Uh, the south, uh, I mean, the rear of the property um, is actually the exact same wooden fence. That's the neighbors. So I'm just gonna connect into it um, to complete the uh, square in the back um, of the fence. Um, and as far as the shed goes, um, it's your standard 12 by eight shed. Um, it's gonna come uh, primered. So I'll paint it myself, which is um, going to be uh, a grayish color to complement the house. And the, good. the fence, the good side will face out? Yes, yes. And I have one question. In the application, it describes a shed as engineered wood. Is that T111? Uh, yes, the shed will be purchased from Lowe's, so it, it, it should have all the appropriate wood. Okay, but it's basically, it's, it's a panel. Yes. With, with the grooves cut into it. Yes. Okay. Because engineered wood would cover a very broad <laughs> range of things, what it possibly could be. Yes, I understand. Okay. Thank you. And I didn't see a picture of the gate for the um, fence. Is it just going to be panels? Um, I don't have a picture, but yeah, it's just going to be exactly what the fence is, just like a fence panel, um, but it's going to be two five foot. Um, it's going to be double doored. So it's going to be two five foot um, panels with a hinge on it. And it, uh, and because that's going to be at the um, entrance of the driveway. Okay. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf and uh, Commissioner Miglis. Uh, if there aren't any other questions regarding this application, I will move on and ask if the public wishes uh, to comment on it in any way. Hearing nothing, I'll ask if the public wishes to speak uh, regarding this application uh, at 123 State Street for fencing and a shed. Hearing none, I will move to the next application. Uh, give me just one second. Thank you. I will ask uh, that we move to application number 5017, Anthony Richardson, the project at 48 Footpath Lane for 10 by 10 Woodshed. Good evening, how are you? Hi. Good, thank you, welcome. Thank you. So uh, uh, this is another project where we received uh, quite a bit of um, documentation in terms of a feel for the uh, shed and the uh, property that it's going to be located on. I um, wanted to ask first if there was anything you wanted to let us know in addition to what you submitted to Coordinator Wolf. Sure, not at this time, just open to your questions. Thank you. No, I thank you for your application it was very detailed. It gave us good drawings and description. Um, we have a plot plan for where it's going. I drove by, I think it's gonna be again, a glancing view. You will be able to see it um, again, a glancing view from the street behind you, but not in any significant way. So I don't really have any other questions for you. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. How about Commissioner Miglis? I'm good, thank you. All right. Uh, Anthony, thank you for joining us this evening. If there isn't anything else you uh, wish to add at this time, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. I will uh, just uh, say that I have the same impression of the project as Commissioner Wolf and Commissioner Miglis. Hearing none, Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to stay for the public meeting, which will be starting very soon, since we only have two applications left. And those include application number 5018, Heather Stone. That's the project for a woodshed in the rear yard at 9 Main Street. Is Heather with us tonight or an, uh, a contractor? Yeah, they are. Great. Is that Moto? Kim, it's Moto G. I am working on unmuting. 
Thank you. Just give us a moment. There we go. They're yeah. unmuted. Perfect. Hi, this is David Stone and Heather Stone. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for joining us tonight, folks, in this virtual uh, HDC meeting. Again, we appreciate uh, the documentation that was uh, provided to Coordinator Wolf, and uh, thank you for working with her on the application. Is there okay. anything that you wanted to let us know before we uh, ask any questions about it? No, just open the questions, anything you need. Thank you. And are you both residents at that address? Yes, we are. Great. So, um, Commissioner Wolf? No, um, no, this shed is actually very visible because you're on the bend there. Yes, um, it was. But it looks like a, you know, a fairly standard, simple construction shed. Will it have a ramp leading up to the door? Um, I believe it will. It, a slight ramp. Yep. Because there oh. will be a six inch, there's going to be a six inch, uh, a six inch difference. But I'm, I'm, I'm thinking there's a lot of soil. It's probably just going to be a, maybe a soil ramp. It's not going to be a, a wooden, like, made ramp or anything like that. I mean, I might. I might just throw a couple bags of stone in front of it maybe or something if it's too much. Okay, sounds good. I don't have any other questions. Again, your application has all the necessary material with it. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. Commissioner Miglis? No, I just wondering why it's so short. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, I, I got most of the design from that from uh, a, Home Depot shed, you know, and, and I just kind of glanced at a quick glance, and we have thought about that. I am six foot one, so yeah. and we we thought about that. We were thinking about amending it, but we didn't want to make uh, too much of a hassle. It's just going to be pretty much for tools, you know. It's it's lawnmowers okay. and hand tools and stuff like that. If you decide that you need something a bit taller, once you actually go to purchase the materials, you could right. do a quick amendment with Kim. And I'm sure that would not be problematic, at least okay. from this commissioner's viewpoint. All right. I would uh, have to agree, uh, although as uh, a person who's only 5'8", but uh, encounters many ceilings lower than that in my uh, basement, uh, yep. sometimes uh, we do adjust ourselves to what we have. So uh, get used to it if that Right. This is something that doesn't change on your part. Um, Doug, if I can interrupt for one second. Sure. Um, on June 2nd, I received an email from Don Moisa. He is a, an, um, one of our engineers in the building department. Um, and he sent me an email slightly concerned that there is a flood zone on the property and you need to keep the shed out of the flood zone. Uh, if you have any questions about where the flood zone is exactly, please call the engineering office um, and I can, I can give you some of that information um, separately at another time. So if we need to move it based on the, on the, um, on the flood yeah. zone, then we can do an amendment if we need to. I have, I have seen the map and I believe it is and it's, it's, we're clear of it, okay. but yeah, and it, it is going to be completely freestanding, so it can be moved simply. Yeah. That's why I didn't. I, I really don't want to build a ramp to it out of wood or anything like that. It's, it's going to be freestanding. It could be moved really simply just by moving it. Well, if it uh, if going into the project, we know that it turns out uh, to be in the flood zone, uh, it would be a good idea to uh, bring that back to us so that um, it could be landed. Uh, outside the flood zone to begin with, but yeah. your representation to us today is that what you pre presented to us, you believe is already outside the flood zone. Is that uh, correct? I so. Yeah, yeah, I believe oh. so. All right. If for some reason you're uh, incorrect about that, um, you know, um, that's something that if you uh, bring work with uh, commission, I'm sorry, uh, coordinator Wolf on, I'm sure that uh, we'll be able to address it uh, yeah. for yeah. you. All right, unless there are any other questions of the commissioners uh, or any other comments the applicants wish to make, I'll ask if there's anyone from the public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, we'll move to the last 
item on the agenda, which is application number 50 dash, I'm sorry, 5019 dash 20, which would be Sandra Stavola's uh, project at 157 Broad Street for fencing uh, around the perimeter backyard. Welcome. Sandra appears to be unmuted, but I think we're not hearing you. Here we go. I think you, can you hear me now? I, yes. I connected to my phone. It tends to work better for me. Sure. But good evening. Thank you for your time tonight. You bet, so Sandra. I have my and, you, and you reside at 157 Broad Street? I do. Thank you for joining us. So we did receive- I also have my contractor here too, if you have any questions. That's Eric. Sure. Okay, Eric, I see you in another window. If we could unmute Eric, that would be great. Eric Lance, could you just identify your business address for us? My business address is uh, 720 North Mountain Road in Newington, Connecticut. Thank you very much, sir. So again, here we have lots of documentation um, and I would just ask if there's anything in addition to that you want to uh, present to us before we ask anything of you. Sure, I will say that I originally submitted for a vinyl fence and uh, Kim called me and told me that that probably wouldn't be accepted and I should have an alternate. So the alternate is the cedar fence that was also submitted with the application. And that's, and the, then, panel, uh, that's the panel yeah. fence that uh, looks good from both sides. Is that my understanding, Eric? Yes, it does. It looks good from both sides. I'm sorry, Sandra, go ahead. No, and then also the lighting on the front of the house. Sure. The lights that are on the front of the house are pretty beat up. So I was just looking to replace those to try to improve the appearance of the house. Great. So I had one thought about uh, the proposal uh, and I haven't had a chance to, uh, of course, speak to my uh, anyone else about this yet. So I don't know if anyone else will have the same concern, but you know, one of the things about that property is that it is uh, located right next door to uh, one of the greatest features that we have in the district in terms of uh, our, our agricultural roots with the still operating mm -hmm. um, Anderson farm stand. And uh, it's certainly understandable that uh, having taken control of the property that you'd like to have some privacy since it is uh, fairly exposed uh, next to um, the farmland uh, adjacent to the homestead and the farm stand in front of it. But uh, one of the things about the, that house that I kind of like is, is the vista from um, the, uh, as you're approaching it uh, on Broad Street, coming from the farm stand area and it isn't often that we, well, I should say a lot of times we connect fences to the rear of uh, the house and sometimes they're connected farther forward than that. And I just wondered if you uh, had a plan for the usage of the area next to the garage uh, that's adjacent to the Anderson property, or if you might be willing to consider having the fence connect to the rear of the garage rather than the front of it. And I guess part of my reason for being interested in that is that the view of the house, that garage is a really attractive one. It's not very high though. And it has, a, uh, I think almost a salt box roof to it. And I think that if there's a fence installed aside it, you'll kind of lose the uh, beauty of that side of the building um, as it's viewed from the public way. So again, I don't know if anyone else felt that way, but I felt like on the other side where the uh, fence connects to the house uh, much closer to the front, because that side doesn't have much of a sight line to begin with, I didn't find it as imposing uh, to have the fence come forward. But on the other side, I thought that if the fence started back a little bit, it might look uh, like it was less concerned about uh, 
its neighbor. I don't know if anyone else felt that way or if that rings uh, anywhere uh, for you, um, uh, Sandra. Thank you. So that I'm totally willing to accept that. I will tell you that, um, well, let me, I am a lifetime resident of Weathersfield. I've lived in Weathersfield my entire life. Um, so I appreciate, you know, I, I, I have a great love for the town. So I appreciate, you know, what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm agreeable to, you know, any suggestions or, or, you know, your considerations or concerns. So I'm okay with that. I will tell you that, um, there's a small deck on the back of the house that's in rough shape and I'm putting in an at grade uh, patio, which I asked him today if I had to submit that through uh, the commission because he's scheduled to start Thursday and she said I did not because it's at grade, but there is going to be a walkway on the side of the house. And uh, currently the garbage cans are kept in the back of the house and, and the landscaper said, because the patio is going to, the patio is going to extend the entire uh, width of the garage. I see. In the back. So he said he would put a, he's going to do a walkway and he said he would put a landing pad for my garbage cans on the side of the house so that they're not sitting on the deck. Sure. So if I shorten the fence up, the garbage cans would have to go someplace else. I don't think, you know, I don't want them sitting on the side of the house and expose, like you said, it's a nice view. So they would come inside the fence somewhere. But if we extended the fence out, then it would allow me to have a landing pad for my uh, garbage cans. But that's not, by any means, you know, whatever you want to approve as far as where we put it. Well, I think that is a great explanation for why you want it where you want it. When Doug uh, made his pitch, I agreed with him. I think it might look a little better starting at the back, but what looks even better than that is hiding your garbage cans um, from being visible from the street yeah. and also not having them on your patio. So I think, I think that that's a perfectly reasonable explanation for why it is where it is. Are you planning any gates? I don't see gates called out on the plot plan. Yeah, there's going to be a five, and I apologize for that. There's going to be a five foot gate on that side uh, to, you know, to allow a mower in and, and obviously to get in and out. So. Of course. And can you, t is it going to be um, of the same material and height as the rest of the fence? Just another panel that fits that area or is it going to look like something else? Eric? <laughs> uh, it's going to be the exact same uh, look as the rest of the fence. Okay, great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that you are here and welcome to the neighborhood. It's a great house. And a yeah, really thank beautiful you. Spot. I'm sure that many if folks you're ever are walking already... by and you want to see it. I've, I've done so much work already, so feel free to stop by. Oh, I'd love to. Thank um, you. And I'm sure there are many uh, folks who walk by and say they uh, wish that they uh, were in your shoes and had been able to get it. So well done. I, I, I was the first one to look at it and nice. I put it on for it immediately. And there were quite a few people. He canceled like he had a full day of showing uh, the next day and he canceled all of them. And he, he actually had someone, he's a realtor himself and he actually had someone give him a bad review online because they didn't have the opportunity to look at the house, so. Oh no. <laughs> well, it looks like it's gone to a caring owner. We greatly appreciate that. Does Mr. Miglis yeah. have anything he wishes he to ask at this time? He does. And my question to the applicant is, you've got lovely pictures of the lights, but you have no description of where they're going. Exactly where the ones are now, if that helps any. I don't know if you know the house. I glanced at it, but it's not, unlike yourself, I don't live there. So refresh my memory. So there's the two, uh, two lights at the entrance at the front door to either side okay. of the, the door. Okay. And nothing by the garage? No. Okay. All right. That's Thank easy. you, Vasek. So are there any other questions of any other commissioners for uh, the applicant or her contractor or anything else that uh, the contractor or applicant needs to share with us at this time? Hearing nothing. I don't think so. Hearing nothing, then I will ask if there's anyone from the public, public that wishes to speak for or against this application. And hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close the public meeting and 
I'm sorry, close the public hearing and open the public meeting on all of the aforementioned items. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous vote. The motion carries and the public hearing is closed and the public meeting is opened. So beginning our public meeting with our uh, project, I think on Middletown Avenue, if I could have just a yep, moment. Garage doors. Thank you. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, for the purposes of discussion. Okay, I will second it. Thank you. Uh, what I will say in addition to, uh, or uh, in an argument in favor of the motion is this. Um, I guess that the distance of the garage from the street, uh, at least uh, that combined with uh, the black doors, uh, as we have found in the past with black windows, sometimes black doors can be a bit more uh, forgiving. Uh, there are certain things about this particular door that is of concern for us. Uh, I think one would be the bead, uh, the artificial beadboard look of them. But because the doors are so far back, I don't uh, think that they'll be that that element will be evident to people coming by on the street. And I think that th because the doors are black and the windows will read as black, the uh, different um, window pattern, uh, or, or I should say the window pattern won't be so evident either. Uh, I agree with uh, what Commissioner Wolf said, which is that these don't resemble carriage doors. Um, but I can't say that I found them, uh, if they aren't going to be carriage doors, I, I can't say that I uh, found them so unattractive in black and at such a distance uh, that um, they might not be uh, considerable. So that's why I made the motion. And I'd be curious to hear uh, what, how the two of you might feel about the uh, proposal. So basically, uh, Roughly, I concur. Uh, you're, I agree with Jen. They do not resemble a carriage door that they're replacing. However, it is a replacement door. Uh, the, I think we are going to have to accept the fact that in most cases, carriage doors are going to go away simply due to the, their replicas are as of right now brutally expensive and most homeowners are not in a position to take on that kind of financial strain and given the choice between that and letting the doors fall apart i think we're going to end up with a a reasonable compromise i agree that the black will mitigate the the prominence of the window design and the prominence of the um, bead board that is being attempted to uh, be simulated. So. Um, I think it's obvious not, I'm not a fan of this door, but I do think that the distance and the color saves it to a certain extent. I wanna be clear for the record though, that this is not a door that I would approve on one of our more traditional buildings. Um, for instance, some of the Hubbards have the small garages with uh, those doors that are very special and, and certainly worth preserving and also more closely located towards the street. And then of course, um, more rarely through the district, we have some beautiful outbuildings that still retain their carriage doors. And those applications would be considered um, independently without this setting any sort of precedent because it is, I don't think, an original door or, or an original outbuilding to this house. And again, it's placed pretty far back and the color saves us from the texture and from the window shape. Commissioner Wolf, I appreciate your comments. I will say this, and I guess this is 
part of why I was trying to pin him down on whether or not this is a door he really likes or if it was a default because I think there's the possibility, I mean, we have approved a number of doors with uh, that aren't carriage doors, but certainly have a bit more glass to them in terms of their verticality. Uh, we've done that routinely on both some of these uh, Hubbard garages uh, in an attempt to try to better replicate a um, carriage door. And we've done it on some uh, other uh, garages in the district just because they do evoke uh, something that's just a bit older. And I guess that for my purposes, uh, the uh, that's, you know, especially since it's just the three of us tonight, uh, you know, I would be willing if there are reservations that are uh, beyond those that have been stated already uh, to encourage that kind of uh, search for a more reasonable uh, alternative in terms of pricing for him that still has those windows. But I think that it's, uh, uh, I don't know how much difference that will make in black in this particular property at that particular distance. Thank you for letting me say that. Thank you. So I will call the vote on this uh, unless there's any further comment. Um, and uh, keeping in mind, especially the uh, comments uh, made by uh, both other commissioners here this evening. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the uh, application is approved as submitted. Oh, thank you. Moving to application number 5010-20, Dan Harrison, the project at 21 Wilcox Street. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the railing system be the Intec rail system, Dartmouth style, with the flat top railing and rectangle posts. Is there a second? There is a second. Thank you, Commissioner Meglis. Discussion? Uh, we did if discuss it turns this. Out, um, I looked at these. Um, I'm really intrigued by this new product. And so this is a great test case for us um, in, in a location that's a little off the beaten path as well. So we get to try it out in a spot um, that makes some sense for us. But I am intrigued by the product. Uh, and if it turns out that the applicant looks at that hand, at the brochure and discovers that it was not Dartmouth that he wanted, there are some other really nice choices in there. I like the Dartmouth a lot. Um, but if it was something else, he could come in for a simple amendment for that from us. Certainly. Uh, we saw already from the way he uh, has worked with us on this that I'm sure he would be in touch with uh, Coordinator Wolf if need be, uh, but we do appreciate the opportunity to see uh, another product that uh, might satisfy not just this homeowner, uh, but others uh, if it's a successful installation. Anything else, Commissioner Miglis? Nope. So at this point, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulations. Ask who made the motions, please. Yes, it was Commissioner Wolf's motion with Commissioner Miglis's second. Thank you. You bet. Application number 5015, Brendan Quinn, the project at 22 Harmon Court that was presented tonight by Coordinator Wolf. I will uh, make a, I'll make a motion. Is submitted. Okay. I'll, I'll call think. it uh, Vasek's motion, if that's all right, and Jennifer's I don't care. second. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So Discussion? basically the, the applicant came in with a very well presented, uh, well detailed application. The shed will be located in a position where the impact on the neighborhood will be minimal. It'll be hard to see from the street. Um, and overall it's a plea, it's an appropriate small shed. I agree. How about Commissioner Wolf? 
Um, I think it's perfectly appropriate and it will be uh, hardly visible at all from the public way. Thank you. Can we stick okay. yellow flowers? <laughs> <laughs> The flowers are uh, vegetation uh, that's temporary is a little different. Yep. So, all those in favor say aye. 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 Commissioner Wolf? Aye. Great. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and application is approved as submitted. Application number 5016, Taylor Stetson, uh, the project. Uh, for the fencing and the shed at 123 State Street. Is there a motion? Move to approve is submitted. Thank I'll you. Happy, I'll be happy to second it. Thank you, Vasek. Any discussion? Um, it was discussed. Go ahead. It was discussed. Uh, the only question is, uh, is there anything in writing that says that the good side is going to be facing the neighborhood? I okay. will add a stipulation that the good side face out. Yeah. The say. contractor confirmed it verbally, but I just wanted to, it'd be nice to have it in writing. So noted. We can add that as a stipulation and do you accept it, uh, Vasek, as yeah. such? Of Great. Course. So uh, given what we heard about both the fence and the uh, shed, I think that uh, this is uh, a project that will have uh, an acceptable impact on the district. And I would ask that all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulation. The uh, next application is 5017. That's the project at uh, 48 Footpath Lane. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve is submitted. Vatsik? Yeah, second. Thank you. <laughs> nice shed. There was another great application with all the details we needed, so we didn't have to ask too many questions. It was neat to see the raptor tails um, yep. on this, and I think it is uh, a little different than uh, most of the newer sheds that we see and kind of evokes uh, an older shed, if there is such a thing uh, in our suburban uh, history. So. I think, it, and as Jen said before, although it's visible from Middletown Avenue North, uh, it will have uh, a minimal impact on the district. So I would uh, call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved. Uh, application number 5018. That's the uh, shed project at 9 Main Street. Is there a motion? Move to approve is submitted. And I'll second. Again, this was the subject of quite a bit of discussion. There was a little bit of concern stated by Coordinator Wolf regarding uh, placement in or out of a flood zone. Uh, certainly, that's something that can be checked once more uh, if it turns out the homeowner was incorrect about uh, its current location being a uh, proposed location being outside the flood zone uh, so, will certainly act in two weeks. Yeah, while we're at it, I did, while we were talking, I took a look at the town's flood maps and about three quarters of that property is in the flood zone. All right, so it sounds like there might be a- They're gonna be hard to move. rest. Okay. Yeah. Fortunately for us tonight, not our concern, they can, chat with the building department and see what they want to do. That is the building department's issue, yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Miglis, Commissioner Wolf. Uh, so uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved. Uh, application number 5019 number 5019-20. Uh, this is the uh, fencing project at 157 Broad Street, the last one of this evening. Uh, before I make the motion, uh, I, well, let me make the motion to approve with a stipulation that the uh, fence on the garage side uh, begin, 
halfway, uh, just behind the, I'll just say for the purposes of discussion, uh, just behind the uh, side window of on that garage. Is there a second for discussion purposes? Uh, I would like you to add that the fence be cedar since she did submit both a vinyl and a cedar fence option. Certainly, I'll add a second uh, stipulation that uh, the fence be cedar. I'll second. So for discussion, uh, it certainly it does make sense. She does have a need to uh, shelter some of the property aside the garage. Uh, it may be that it would be better to just shelter the whole thing. Uh, I'm certainly open to hearing that if you all feel that way uh, versus uh, having the uh, the fence start either in front of or behind the window. You know, Doug, I think you have a good idea. I think uh, it's a nice compromise. And I just pulled up the application again to see where the window was on the north side of the garage there. And I, it certainly looks like if the fence were to start right after that window, that there would still be plenty of room for a barrel and a recycling. Um, keeping it both off her patio and also covered from the view on Broad Street. I think that's a good compromise. Thank you. Vatsik, do you feel comfortable with the idea of allowing the window to be exposed and uh, I, I still giving I her some do. shelter? I certainly do. My first preference would be, as your gut feeling was also, would be to start at the back of the garage. Uh, I see two problems with starting at the back of the garage. One is that the fence would be taller than the garage. That's right. Uh, so that would look quite awkward there. Um, yeah, that, that would be the primary thing. Great. Thank you very much, commissioners. I appreciate your uh, input uh, so that we could come to uh, hopefully a, a solution that uh, is embraceable by everyone. Uh, we appreciated the homeowner being willing to consider uh, some of these thoughts today. And it was great having the contractor available so that uh, we had some uh, firsthand, uh, he has firsthand input from us as he does the installation. So Doug, I'll call the vote. Yes. Before you call the vote, can you word that stipulation how you want it to read, please? Sure. Uh, the the first stipulation would be that the fence on the north side would begin uh, just behind the north facing window of the garage. Just behind? Yes, I believe that was where uh, folks were thinking it would be. Uh, yeah. And that, of course, includes behind the trim. You know, it certainly doesn't, they can comfortably land the uh, fence at a uh, at Doug. a comfortable spot, Doug. Yes. If the stipulation reads, the fence shall begin behind the window of the the north facing window of the garage, and just period, not okay. just just behind. So whether it begins six inches behind or a foot or two feet, it's about the same. Great. Okay. So Vasek, how are you wording it? The fence shall begin behind the north facing garage window. And that gives them Thank the you. leeway they need for the installation. Okay. The second stipulation was the cedar. Correct. Yeah, I have that one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner uh, Wolf and uh, Coordinator Wolf and Co Commissioner Miglas uh, for putting that all together. So, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved with stipulations. That uh, completes the uh, docketed matters and allows us to move to approval of minutes for May 26, 2020. Do we have uh, the necessary voters for that? Uh, yes, all three of you are here. Thank you. Move to approve as submitted with our usual Compliments to our note taker. Thank you very much. And the second was Vasek's, I believe. Of course. So at this point, I'll also uh, thank our uh, coordinator, Wolf, uh, who uh, 
work so closely with our reporter on all of these matters as well. Thank you all, uh, both ladies. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the minutes are approved of May 26. Other business, public comments and general matters of the historic district. Uh, uh, Coordinator Wolf, did anyone uh, ask to speak at this point? No one. So noted. Report of the historic district coordinator. Anything to add, Kim? None. Any correspondence? Nothing. Anything that either commissioner wishes uh, to address before I entertain a motion for adjournment? Nope. Then I uh, will entertain the motion for adjourn and uh, say so with great thanks to all of you participating tonight in tonight's meeting. So moved. And a second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much, folks. Thank, Thank you, you very everyone. Much. It's just in time. I'm sitting in the dark now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>